because fasting impacts on so many diseases and so many different processes. I go to these talks and everybody gets up and they talk about the disease mechanisms that, hey, in this condition, this happens. These are the pathways. Another one gets up and says, these are the pathways that I've discovered that causes these diseases. And they'll all talk about that. Then at the end, I would say, is there one condition, one treatment, or one intervention that can interact on all these pathways and comes down to fasting? That's why I like fasting so much, because it's one thing that will impact on so many. So let's start with that. So I'm going to start as a cardiologist, typical scenario in my office. Patient comes in. And first patient I'm going to say is, okay, is 45 years old, and it's a male that has been complaining of high blood pressure. Goes to his doctor. Doctor says that, yeah, here's a pill. You're going to take this medication from now onward, okay? He comes over here. He says, well, doc, what's going on? So I say, okay, you want to fast? He says, yes, I heard about your fasting. I say, why do you want to fast? Well, let's see. If you have high blood pressure, what are the causes that make me think that fasting is going to help you? Number one, it's going to be insulin resistance. If you have insulin resistance, insulin, when it's very high, causes nitric oxide depletion. So nitric oxide is a vasodilator, so you get vasoconstriction instead. So you're going to get high blood pressure. So the first thing I want to do is, What's your insulin level? In order to gauge that, he may be obese or he may not be obese. He may be what is called a toffee. Thin on the outside, fat on the inside. Really fat, nice and thin. Maybe he's got a little bit of a stomach. Does this patient have insulin? Is he obese or not? Does he have toffee or not? So how am I going to check for that? So I'm going to check his hemoglobin A1C. And even, even if it's not elevated, if it is greater than 5.4, but less than 6.4, this patient has insulin resistance. Then I'm going to measure his Kraft test. It's going to tell me whether his insulin levels are shooting up or not eh? after food. Then I'm going to measure his waist size and see whether he's got some obesity there. I'm going to get a liver ultrasound. That's going to tell me whether this guy's got a fatty liver or not. So if he checks on any of these, I'm going to say to him, you need to fast because you need to restore insulin sensitivity. So he may not be terribly overweight. He may be. He may be a toffee. It doesn't matter. The fact is he needs his insulin levels to come down. And the only way to bring insulin levels down, the most effective way is stop eating and causing your insulin to stay up all the time like that. Because before it even gets a chance to come down, the next meal comes along. Next meal comes along. And in between, throw in a little bit of snacks. All day long, his insulin levels are high. He's now insulin resistant. That is why this man is in trouble. He's going to have high blood pressure. So you see how you approach that. So this guy, he is going to go into fasting mode. How am I going to do this fasting mode? I'm not going to attempt to restrict calories. There's nothing to do with calorie counting. This is going to be about eating only once or twice a day. Now, I'll look at him, and I'll look, see how strong he is. Do you really want to lower your blood pressure without medications? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Do you like breakfast? Eh, sometimes I don't like it. Skip it. You don't need it. Do you like lunch? Yeah, I like lunch, but sometimes I skip that too. Then skip it. So you see, it depends on the person. So then I'll tell him, skip your lunch, skip your breakfast, and just have a dinner. Just one dinner. Actually, you won't get a spike like that. He'll actually get very little insulin. Why? Because all day his insulin has been so low that when he did eat that meal in the evening, he's going to make very little insulin because he's sensitive. And because he made very little insulin, what's going to happen? Insulin, insulin. What does insulin do? Gives you a fatty liver. So immediately, immediately, because his insulin levels are so low, he's going to stop putting on fat here. All this is going to start going down. 
is fat around the pancreas, all the visceral fat is going to start going out. So he'll start losing all this. He'll also, by the way, lose weight on his tongue. The tongue is mostly fat. That's why he can wobble around so much. Yeah? So you lose a lot of weight in your tongue. The first 20, 30 pounds you lose, it's this disproportional weight loss on your tongue. That's why sleep apnea gets better. S snoring gets better. People immediately say, oh my God, I'm sleeping so much better. I'm not snoring so much. And by the way, snoring can also cause high blood pressure. Well, not snoring itself, but sleep apnea causes high blood pressure too. Hmm? So you're going to be able to fix his resist insulin resistance and his snoring at night. And his blood pressure is going to come down just by doing this. Just by doing this one thing alone. So it depends who's asking. So when he does this, less of his calories are going to go into storage. So, so wait a second, how can that be? Less go into storage. So where do the calories go? You burn them. Your metabolic rate goes up. The brown, the brown fat cells, they spin and they burn fat, and they burn calories. Your brown fat increases. And the patient, how does he feel when he's doing that? He feels great. He has more energy now. He feels good. Because less of his intake went into storage. It's available to him now. The full tank is available to him to use. Instead of half his tank is stored away and he doesn't. So the difference is, he wakes up in the morning now. He's going to feel so much better. He's going to have so much more energy. He's going to be so much more vibrant. And he's not going to be hungry all the time either. Because remember, you get, these patients get leptin resistance. So what happens? He never, these guys who eat all the time, they never feel satiated. They never feel that I've had enough. They don't get that signal. They have leptin resistance. This guy now, he's going to get leptin sensitivity. So let's say that he did go to his mate's house on Saturday, and then it's lunchtime. And he says, well, you know, I do intermittent fasting. I only eat one meal a day. Doc told me, and I really love it. But go ahead and have some lunch anyway. So he says, okay, you know, you're my buddy, I'll have lunch. He'll eat that lunch, but he'll only eat a little bit. He'll feel full. He'll get that signal. He'll get the signal that I'm full, I'm satisfied, I'm okay. That's the advantage of this guy. He's going back to normal. He feels full. He'll only have a small meal, his lunch, and he's happy. He's moving. He's carrying on. So he's restored his leptin sensitivity, and his insulin levels have come down. And then his nitric oxide levels started going up. And not only did his blood pressure come down, he also noticed that his erectile dysfunction got better. What a side effect. So why did that get better? Because nitric oxide, it's all to do with nitric oxide. I can't tell you how many hundreds of patients we've done this on, and the ED got better. It's all got to do with nitric oxide. All got to do with nitric oxide. So this guy, his blood pressures are going to come down. He may or may not lose a lot of weight. The Tofi will lose some weight. He will lose some weight, but not a whole hell of a lot. Many people think that, oh, I'm going to lose about 50 pounds or 40 pounds. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not going to lose that much weight. So with him, the purpose of this fasting is to restore his hormones, bring his insulin level down. His Kraft test will normalize. One year later, I do the Kraft test, which is the insulin test. It becomes normal. I repeat the liver ultrasound in one year. His fat's gone. His A1Cs, they probably go to less than 5.4 to come down to normal. So if you enjoyed this short segment, here's another clip that I think you'll really enjoy. And if you'd like to see the whole video, then click here.